So the last time we spoke uh, to Vishwanath uh, about uh, the water situation in Bengaluru, uh, we realized that there is a huge proportion of uh, wastewater treatment that can help uh, the address the concerns of uh, uh, the water scarcity for a few people who don't have access to piped water from the Kaveri. So we are here today to understand more about how this actually works and how, how can we make this useful for people. So, uh, Vishwanath, why are we uh, here today? Uh, just explain that to us. So what we're seeing is the historic town of Devanhalli, the fort from 1501, and a lake called Sihinir Kere, which is Sweetwater Lake. Mm. This town is dependent on deep bore wells for water. We're trying to see how a lake can be revived, how groundwater can be brought into play, and how can a town become self-sufficient with local waters and treated wastewater. What's happening? To see near Kere is the treated wastewater from the Hebbal, Horamau, and Raja Canal plants are being pumped into the lake and mixes with rainwater, gets diluted, filters through the earth, comes into a well. From the well, we set up a water treatment plant which is state of the art, make sure that it conforms to BIS 10500 standards. We make sure that it gets supplied to the town of Devanali. So what was the situation in Devanali town before all this uh, happened? So Devanali is a town with a population of between 40 to 45,000 people, they had 110 bore wells, which are deep bore wells for their water supply, of which about 31 were dysfunctional. Mm. They've gone to a depth of 1,400 feet. They have very high salinity. The mm. TDS, as it's measured, total dissolved solids, was around 2,000, right? Mm. So they have then set up 14 RO plants for mm. people to go and take their drinking cooking water. The rest of the salt water is put through the pipe water supply and it comes once in 10 days or once in 14 days. That was the situation. Mm. Now this one, uh, how? what is the source of this? Uh, you said it comes from three different um, uh, uh, sewage treatment plants around right. Hebal. Yeah. Now where does that water come from? So there was a step-by-step -step process followed with a lot of NGOs and other groups coming together to help Devanali sort its problem. We were helping the town municipal council, right? So Environmental Foundation for India came and desilted the lake, okay. connected it to the catchment. So that was the first step that happened, rainwater would come in. Uh, the well that we see behind us was also being filled with debris. Mm. This got cleaned thanks to a group called Satris who came and helped out. Mm. So we made sure that the well came back to life. Treated wastewater from the plant of Hebbal, Raja Canal and Horamau, 210 million liters per day is supposed to be pumped to Chikbalapur district. Currently, it's operating at 130 million liters per day. Mm. So from the three sewage treatment plants, the treated wastewater comes to Bagalur Lake, where it gets diluted with rainwater. From Bagalur Lake, it's pumped to Kandavara, near Chikbalapur. Mm. In the middle, we tap in into the treated wastewater, the town taps into it, leads it into a channel, which flows in and comes to Sihinir Kere. So Sihinir Kere is filled with rainwater during the monsoons and treated wastewater in the summertime. It's always full or at least half full. Fishing activities go on, birds are here, and it recharges the aquifer. That recharge filters the water further. So when we pick it up from the well, it's actually very good quality water. Mm. We then set up a state-of-the-art water treatment plant, which mm. includes the 130 micron filter, an activated carbon filter, UV sterilization, and chlorination. Make sure it con conforms to drinking water standards of NABL, BIS 10500, and then we supply it to the town. Currently, we are supplying about 200,000 liters of water a day. We are hoping to ramp it up to about 600,000 to 650,000 liters a day. And that comes out of just this lake or it... Uh, mm. So, what we have figured out is that the lake recharges the shallow aquifer. The aquifer is bigger than the lake mm. and it's getting recharged by other means too. There's rainwater falling on the land, there's the channel flow. So, we're trying to understand how much water the aquifer can hold. Mm. The shallow aquifer, mind you, is to the depth of about 100 feet. So that has tremendous potential for storage. Many advantages. The water quality in the shallow aquifer is pretty good. The salinity is low. It's about 350 TDS, which is drinking water standards. And we tap into it with something called a filter bore well, which is a perforated casing bore well, which goes to about 100 feet deep. The big advantage with the well and filter bore well is that the energy required to pump the water is very less. So the cost per kiloliter here is about 1 rupee 50 by in terms of energy. So there's less carbon emission, less cost of water, less energy consumption. As the aquifer rises, 
and that's the miracle that we can achieve through rainwater harvesting and treated wastewater blending. So what we see here, Satya, is a filter bore well, huh? like I explained to you. It's a slightly different way of doing bore wells. Mm. First, you dig 18 inches into the ground mm. till you hit hard rock, roughly about 100 feet in this part of the world. Then you put in slotted pipe casing, you know, this PVC casing mm. has holes in it, mm. and that, that's put in. Then the side of it is filled with gravel. Between mm. the 6-inch casing and the 18-inch hole, you fill it with gravel so that the gravel acts as a filter, right? Then you put in an air compressor and you make sure that the pores are all opened up, right? For about two days, it's opened up. Then it taps in into the shallow aquifer. The shallow aquifer fed by the lake as well as fed on the land. So what we need to understand is the interface between the lake and the shallow aquifer. And we also have to understand the shallow aquifer. What we are doing here as part of our learning lab mm. is to make sure that every filter bore well has a meter. Mm. So we know what is the wa water extraction. This has a one and a half HP pump. Mm. So per hour it uses roughly one unit. Mm. And if the yield is 6,000 liters, one unit, 6,000 liters. Cost per unit is about five rupees 50 paisa. So it's less than one rupee for a thousand liters energy cost. Mm. So what we're figuring out is that if we raise the water table, the shallow aquifer coming up, the quality of water improves, get softer water, lower TDS, but also much more energy efficient and climate resilient water. The carbon emissions are less. So the mapping of these aquifers uh, help you understand where you sink these shallow bore wells. Yes. And these end up replacing all of the deep bore wells exactly. that are being sunk at 1,400 yes. feet, right, inside the city. So typically the deep bore wells have a 15 HP pump or a 20 HP pump. This has a 1 HP or 1.5 HP pump. So there's a factor 15 reduction in energy consumption, plus the quality improvement. As and when we are able to get the filter bore wells operational fully, we should be decommissioning all the deep bore wells. The town should then move to less carbon emitting water. So I was uh, trying to understand the symbiotic relationship between the city and how it is, how it's water that is, uh, you know, getting out of the city the wastewater that we are talking about and its relationship with how what we see around us and how it is helping feed so many people how do you look at that so, so the, the, the city gets uh, 1450 million liters per day from the Kaveri right it'll get an additional 775 so it'll be 2225 to 2245 million liters per day this water which comes in into the city gets uh, used by people and then about 80 percent of it say roughly 1800 million liters comes out as wastewater or treated wastewater right now this treated wastewater has tremendous potential for it to be reused both for industrial urban applications but also for natural applications like filling lakes mm -hmm. and uh, that's what Bangalore is doing Bangalore is imagining itself as a water and fertilizer factory so a huge chunk of the treated wastewater from Bangalore is pumped to Kolar and Chikbalapur district Anikal, Ramnagaram and other district sites. Right? So this is part of the transfer of wastewater to Chikbalapur district it's called the HN Valley project, mm. the Hebal Nagwara Valley project. That's about 210 million liters per day that is to be pumped to Chikbalapur, of which a small portion comes to Devnagli, blends with rainwater and then becomes uh, domestic water through a process of treatment. And the lake here, we are sitting on something where there are people yeah. using this lake and right. consuming uh, the, the lake itself as an ecosystem. How do you explain that to people? Uh, so, the idea with water is not that you only use it functionally in pipes. Can water occupy nature, provide biodiversity? You saw the birds flying around and corporates, um, ponderons, everything. Can it provide livelihoods? So, fishes are inside this lake. There's a fisherman who comes and uses a coracle to harvest fish and catch the fish. Then it recharges the aquifer, it filters through the earth and becomes available to us as water to be used for domestic purpose. Livelihoods, biodiversity and functionality, these are the three critical components by which we should design for water. It is often said that Singapore runs on a lot of treated wastewater and that seems like a very attractive thing for people to look at and here we have a microcosm of how that can be done. It, it uh, helps us understand how a well-engineered water system can actually uh, help communities in the region and uh, that's why I, I thought we should come to the location and see this but before it was what it is now you said this well was dysfunctional the what was the situation of the lake? The lake was bone dry for 14 years. Really? There was, no, there was complete soil here it was there was not a drop of water for 14 years 
only when it was desilted, linked to the catchment, did the rainwater flow in. See, we need to work on local water sources, right? Correct. And local water sources, as we discussed, is rainwater, surface water, groundwater, a bit of pipe water from outside, and treated wastewater or treated used water. We're trying to combine all of it in this town level, but linking it to the metropolis of Bangalore so that they talk to each other. Now, when, you, uh, when, when this water was being filled and the lake was dying and you had to revive that, what did people think about it? You know, I don't know if they had imagined that this could actually give them a water which is like uh, 350 TDS instead of uh, 3000 uh, TDS, right? I mean, did they even know? So we didn't. Even we didn't know. We were helping the town municipal council. We were in this town helping them for since 2012. So when we saw the well, one of my colleagues saw it and uh, cleaned it up. We didn't realize the potential of the well. But when we saw the clarity of water there, and when the well diggers themselves introduced fish and the fish were swimming about and the turtles were swimming about, we understood that the water quality was very high. So we checked for the TDS levels. We found that it was really good. So that's when the idea clicked to us to say, why don't we use it as domestic water supply? How do you map the aquifers in this region? How do you understand this lake has the potential to do this or not? How so we, we have a trained hydrogeologist in our team, Ayushi Biswas. She has understood geology and hydrogeology. <coughs> she uses old maps, Google Earth maps, finds out the location of old open wells which show what the shallow aquifer is about. And yesterday she was telling me that she has identified 110 old open wells in this part How? of the world. So <coughs> she then identifies the rock formation and tries to calculate what the aquifer capacity is, how much water it can store, where it should be the recharge, and how it can be safely, sustainably used. And this now, the water from the lake goes into the well. Yeah. Beautiful turtles and fish in there. <coughs> then what happens to it? Right. So the water recharges the aquifer. It Correct. gets filtered by the earth, and it improves in quality dramatically. The suspended solids are removed. The total dissolved solids, some of it is also removed. So the well water is crystal clear. Then it goes through a conventional water treatment process, which includes a 130 micron disk filter, where you make sure that all the suspended solids are removed, an activated carbon filter, so that all odors and bad gases are removed, then a UV sterilization, and then chlorination, to make sure that there's no bacteria or virus when we supply the water to the town of Devanelli. So the town of Devanelli is... Uh getting good water now from this and uh, of course the area around here is also growing how how does this scale uh, so this is critical as you saw when we were coming from bangalore there are many apartments many gated communities urbanization is rapidly catching up with this place so all the lakes of chikmalapur district and bangalore rural districts if they are protected and preserved if they collect all rainwater if they are filled with treated wastewater of a high quality and if it recharges the aquifer and that's used sustainably, there will be sustainable water for this area. Otherwise, we'll be in trouble. But the lessons are clear. If you can do the protection of lakes, if you can fill it with treated wastewater, and if you can protect the wells, you will have water sustainability. Because all of the pipe seems to be going into the city of Bengaluru, and the outskirts seems to be continually expanding, like you just said. Right. And there are pockets, there are different... Uh, Authorities, this comes under the TMC, Town Municipal Corporation. Then the BBMP limits are long gone by the time we left uh, uh, the place. Uh, how do these people work uh, in? Uh, uh, so that's the challenge for us institutionally. Can we work not on the Bangalore metropolitan area as it's con currently defined for the BWSSB, but the Bangalore metropolitan regional development authority area, right? We pick that 8,000. 800 square kilometers, and then you do an infrastructure plan for that 8,840 square kilometers, which includes Kaveri water supply, but also local waters from rainwater, treated wastewater, and groundwater. That's the challenge before us, the institutional governance challenge. And is do you think the potential for doing this lies outside of the city, and the city is a gone case, they are not going to be able to use this? What, ab what about the lakes that are already there, like Belandur, Varathur, Agara, and whatever else? So we have 186 lakes in the city. All of them are potentially possible to have treated wastewater filling them in the summer months, right? Rainwater should be the dominant form of water which gets into the lake. But when needed, we can use treated wastewater of a high quality, which we are now achieving through our STPs. And there is enough and more water for Bangalore City and for the larger Bangalore metropolitan region. Why is this a good case study to uh, repeat? Have, has this happened anywhere else? Have you tried to do this? The only other city which has done this of equivalent scale is Mexico City. But what Bangalore is trying with its transfer of treated wastewater for filling tanks is the first in India. Now we 
think we can push the envelope for it to be reused to recharge aquifers and also for domestic water supply. So this is the, uh, the future that Bangalore shows to the rest of India as to what can be done with the waters. What, do you, what, what kind of timelines are you looking at for Bengaluru to solve its water crisis using this kind of wastewater treatment? Um, where do you see that? We need a bit more of understanding of how lakes behave vis-a-vis -vis aquifers, right? Some lakes recharge the aquifers, some don't. So if we are able to identify the potential hydrogeology of the aquifers at the lake interface between those two, then we should be able to crack it. It's not rocket science. It can be done in a matter of six months if we do a good study, geological study. So it's possible for Bangalore to have a plan for each one of its 186 lakes to keep the lake alive, but also then to make sure that it recharges sufficiently for the aquifers to provide more water. So the last time we talked about this institutional setup that you mentioned, uh, the governance uh, structure, maybe how does how do we set that up now? Is there any moves you're seeing towards that? Yes, so the PWSSB is thinking of or is creating already a groundwater cell, which will be human resourced with uh, hydrogeologists. It will also create, hopefully, a used water cell where the use of treated wastewater will be the dominant uh, decision-making paradigm. And if those two cells talk to each other, along with the lakes, then we have the institutional framework uh, which will help us to plan and develop goals and objectives to reuse treated wastewater, to protect our lakes, and to use our aquifers sustainably. So there are different things. Right? The lakes themselves have been given out. There is Lake Development Authority, there is VBMP, there is VWSSB owning some of the bigger lakes which are sources of water. And this doesn't even, isn't even called Bangalore. This is probably Devanali town in Chikpalapur constituency. How then do you look at water management per se? There is also Kaveri which is interstate, which is even larger. Right? There is going to be multiplicity of agencies somewhere. Is there that urban water cell kind of a model? What, should, what do you think can be the remit? What are the experiments they can try now? This is a very good experiment. It's already feeding, how many did you say, 40,000 people yeah. in Devanali town? 40, That's how many people it's already giving water to. Uh, if we have to scale this, like you said, six months of hydrogeology mapping, looking at aquifers and all that, but how can the urban water cell get its act together? That's the challenge, you know. Even uh, trained geologists need to understand the shallow for better because we haven't really focused on it uh, enough. Luckily for us, there's a Government of India funding available through Amrut project, which demands that you develop a shallow aquifer management plan and an aquifer management plan. And there will funds available if you want to use that funds in a positive fashion. So all the wheels are aligning themselves gradually and slowly. We have to understand the large canvas that water needs for its sustainability from the river basin to the hinterland where the treated wastewater moves and all of it should then be managed. Ideally, one would have a river basin institution which would do it, as you were pointing out. But in the absence of a river basin institution, we have to look at the Metropolitan Planning Committee and the regional development plans as part of our infrastructure for understanding of how we need to be consistent. So groundwater as a public good or as a common good, who do you think should own it and who do you think? Because we have BBMP drawing the bore wells like we talked about last time. Um, uh, how, how does this ownership and uh, these kind of experiments, how do you think they can go forward? Who should now take up these experiments? You said the MPC can do something, but that's kind of not happening uh, effectively with not good leadership. No, groundwater was in Wild West terrain. It was informally managed. There are 5 lakh bore wells popping out 600 to 800 million liters per day, depending on what we assume is the figure there. We need to formalize it gradually. We need to turn it into a common pool resource, for which we need first institutional understanding of aquifers and then the groundwater recharge rate. Then the legal framework to be able to say, for example, meter it, to price it, to then regulate it so that only permitted uh, wells are allowed to be sunk and so on and so forth. So we, build, we have to build the legal and institutional framework to manage groundwater better. I think the process has started. We will find our way. Pune Municipal Council has been one of the first... Uh, in India to set up a complete framework for groundwater management within the local body. Perhaps other towns other towns will follow, perhaps Bangalore will follow with BBMP or BWS has been taking ownership of that. Let's say the town grows now and this right. lake is insufficient, what then happens? So this is an experimental lake, it's a very small lake, it's only six acres. We now have a very large lake next, which is ten times bigger. And the recharge rate of that lake is 20 times larger than this lake. So we hope that we, we shift to the aquifer which that lake feeds. The entire requirement of the town for the next 20 years can be taken care of by that aquifer. That is third phase of our project. 
This is amazing. I think this is how I think we should look at uh, new ways of managing our water, engineering our water, and reimagining how we get our water, at least to fill a huge part of our uh, things. So thanks, Vishwanath, for uh, coming over and uh, talking about and showing us really. So, for the first time in Uru Labs, we are moving out. Uh, of the room and we find it very enriching to be here, look at all these things and actually showing us, you know, it's better than telling us <laughs> all these things. Correct, Satya. And so one of the things that we've taken care of is to make sure that all the operation can be done by two pump operators of the town municipal council. We don't want to overload the existing human resources there. We don't have to capacitate them much higher. So keep the technology as basic as possible, yet delivering the results that you need. So that's the kind of things that we think we can repeat across the 186 lakes which exist in Bangalore to make Bangalore self-sufficient for water. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.